Natasha Henderson. Um, I'm a painter, um, and a couple of years ago, I learned how to make felt. Um, so since that time, I've been making things like uh, felt scarves, um, felt jewelry, basically anything felt that I could try to make a living by selling on my Etsy page. Um, that was not sizable because I didn't, you know, I thought, well, if I make a hat, someone's got to make a hat and it'll fit and I'll have to mail it back. You know, big, you know, um, and slippers, you know, you can make your own slippers, um, but if you're size 5, if it's size 10, the slipper doesn't fit, that kind of thing. So um, I actually also have been making uh, things like puppets, which I know is just an example of, it's like a toy, but um, the fabric. The fabric I make is made as a mold, but it's also made um, with layers of raw, well, almost raw, it's been clean, carded, and colored uh, wool. So I, I, what I'd like to do today is just to show you the process where I make a basic uh, felt, piece, just a piece of felt, because you can really, go crazy with all the different kinds of um, shapes and sizes and colors and everything that you can do with this stuff. Um, but So just to show you the basics, I'll just demonstrate um, the fibers. So this is, this is a Coriadale, which is the name of a sheep. So the, the wool tends to be named after the sheep that it comes from. There's another common one is Merino, so that's again the name of a sheep. Um, now the process requires, well, a fiber, a natural fiber, requires heat, requires friction, and it requires soap. So that, the heat will be provided by uh, boiling or very hot water. The friction will be provided by work that I work with my hands and the bubble wrap that I have here. And I mean, you can use bubble wrap, but there's a lot of different things you can use. Um, anything that doesn't felt with the um, wool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And like something that's a resist, but also has a texture to it, like rubber or um, some kind of a, a plastic mats or bamboo. Bamboo mats are kind of neat too. People use that a lot. It's a little more organic looking and feeling than someone like me who kind of doesn't believe in plastic. <laughs> I feel like a, yeah. So I, you know, I, I kind of don't like using plastic, but it's very useful at this point. So, um, so the deal is that you would lay your layers of this wool that, in this case, I bought these, they're called roving, um, and you can kind of like paint with them um, by layering them with all your fibers going one direction um, in an even layer, it could be thick or thin, and then the next layer to have them going the opposite direction. So working at right angles to each other, you build up a pile of fluffy stuff, which, I mean, it could be all one color, it could be very thick, you could put surprises in it, like for example, in this um, little animal, I had layered some pieces of leftover cotton um, and uh, sequins and things. I did eventually sew on some sequins as well just to make them a little more bold, but there are some built in there as well that were sewn on the fabric beforehand. And um, yeah, so that's the thing is you can change your colors and again it's like thinking in terms of layers of colors. It's similar to printing in a way if you're you know working in silk screen or something. Um, just to think of what's behind, or in painting, if you think of what's behind affecting what is laid on top eventually. Um, so it's kind of like an art form in itself. But it's also, I don't know, I, I, I like the practicality of being able to make my own wool scarves and stuff. You know, if I think, oh, shucks, I wish I had a green scarf. Well, it <laughs> took me an hour or two, and there it is. Of course, I have to find the green wool, but. Uh, Where did you get this? This stuff, um, uh, this I bought.
out at um, a shop on Saint Hubert in Kosovobian Metro called Unraveled, unraveled in French. Defiloche. That's it. Yeah, so they, they called it unraveled, but it's also a quilting supply store. It's a big, it's a really nice wool shop, um, and they have okay, the colored woven. They used to, there used to be another place down in Saint Henri, but they recently closed. So since that happened, which is um, I noticed this, this shop has a lot better selection okay. and more colors and stuff too. Um, another a really good place if you go to Ottawa is um, uh, called Wabi Sabi. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine works there. And okay. they actually have lots of courses they teach as well. And she's the one who taught me how to make belts. Okay. So, yeah. Is that in the market in Ottawa? Um, no, it's uh, in Hinton, Hintonburg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on Wellington West, or yeah, yeah, it's on Wellington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I really like that neighborhood too. Yeah, that's cool. So wool, cool wool shops tend to be in really cool neighborhoods. So. Yeah, <laughs> Tracy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I just um, this there's kind of a science to this, but there's kind of not a science to this. It's there's art and science, and I can just randomly throw these down. It doesn't have to be exactly rigidly at 45 or 90 degree angles. They can be at 45 degree angles, just as long as the fibers don't lay like they currently are. Because if they lay like this, it'll kind of felt, but not really felt. Mm -hmm. It needs to have some kind of cross crosshair action happening for that when it's compressed and rubbed and whatnot, it really sticks together. It's kind of like um, a hair shampoo commercial, what the science behind this is, <laughs> because the soap acts, well, some people say it acts as a glue, but it also, I don't know, it, it does something to the, the hair shaft. It does something where it um, makes the fibers kind of go slinky, and it's like when you're shampooing your own hair, it feels a certain way, and then you wash it out, and then your hair can get kind of crinkly again. So I'll just uh, give you an example here. So I've made, made my little conglomeration of stuff that's about, let's look at almost an inch thick on the table and it's all fluffy. So the next step is to pour just a little bit of liquid or you can suds up some soap. It's not, it's, again, there's, it's just as long as it's some kind of soap. Some people are purists and they say use sunlight or nothing else. Um, I found that the BioVer stuff or hand soap or any kind of soap I have works. Um, it's just as an initial thing where it helps the wool to come together. And I'm kind of, there's a few different methods to doing this. Um, often myself I'll spray, if it's a very delicate design, I'll spray it first with mm -hmm. the rinse of water so it kind of helps it to set. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, I just dump some hot water on <laughs> top. Um, and so I've got this plastic laid out bubble side up, and then so I'm, I either take another piece or another type of plastic but I'll just pull this over and bubble side down. So I make a little sandwich, I pat it, so it starts to compress. So this, the process of friction and compression is happening as I do this, but also the hot water um, is making the wool shrink. So it's like when you shrink a sweater in the wash or in the dryer and put it in for too long, it shrinks. So. Basically, um, if you felt correctly, if you do this wet felting process correctly, the shape, the shape you make will shrink up to about 30%. So for making sized things, it's kind of a challenge. Like if you say, I want to make a hat, well then you have to measure your head and then make it a size. But that being said, it's kind of an approximate thing and you can always stop it from felting at a certain point. If it's getting too small, you don't have to keep going until it's really a tight little ball of wool. You can sort of stop, and like I was mentioning to Lauren, I think it was earlier, I'm kind of, well, I've, I've myself been lazy. Sometimes when I'm doing this, it's hot and it's late and I want to stop. And so if it's not like something that has to be a hard finished project, I'll soft, you know, I'll, I'll leave it, I'll stop and it'll be softer, kind of pop it or whatever. So as long as I get to a certain point where it doesn't rip apart, you can choose to stop.
or as long as it's not, you know, if it's something that requires laundering or something, then it'll just keep shrinking <laughs> until it's done. So, so yeah, basically I roll it up and I work it around. It's quite hot right now. Um, my hands like the heat, so I can do this. A lot of people will let it just sit until it's not so hot, or they'll wear gloves or something like that. I'm going to peel it back, and I'm actually I'm just going to... I just worked it a teeny little bit, so you can see that's what I had laid out, but the flattened version of it. Um, and it is very, it's not really felted right now. I can still wiggle the wool around, it'll still pull apart if I tugged at it. Um, so I'm just going to flop it back down, and lay this down on top again, add it again. Okay, I can be a little more rough with it this time. I'm going to roll it up again. And what I'm going to start to do is... Oh, hi! <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> um, it's a, So it's a felting process as the fibers all come together. Um, but then after a little while it becomes what's called a fulling process where it's more like the finishing surface. So this makes some of the shrinking happen. And as you can see I'm getting a little more rough and tumble with this. I don't really, it's not so precious and I can tell that it's starting to come together. So the, there's little things to do like the finger, the fiber test and pull and it's still coming up but I can tell by touch that it's a lot tougher. So I'm just going to lay it down again. And I'm going to roll it the other way now. And the reason for that is because, remember, I laid out the fibers in a, like a right angle. Mm -hmm. um, so when I roll it one way, it shrinks the way that I roll it or rub it. And then I, so I do it the other way, and then it shrinks that way as well. So then that makes, um, makes it like an even, sort of shaped object. So it's you know, starting to cool down a little. Um, I can add some more hot water to it if I want. Again, it's, it's shrinking more and more. It's Why would you add more water? Just because work it's, it? it's the um, process of like the heat from the right. water, okay. in this case. The heat from the water makes the wool kind of push. Yeah. Push. Oh my gosh, it's hot. Um, sometimes, sometimes, like I won't do it today because we're in a cold house tonight, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes you can take it and run it under the tap under cold water, okay. you know, kind of do an alternate, back and forth. alternation, yeah. <laughs> alternation yeah. between hot and cold water. Yeah. Again, it's all about shocking the fibers. Yeah. And so that's another thing is that what I'm doing right now is I'm just popping it around, again, shocking the fibers. Um, making them, they were like this, making them really start to cling together and be surprised. Um, and you can keep going like this for quite some time, back and forth, doing different methods, including this throwing. What, I'm being very gentle with it because it's not really set. I should have done a lot more of the rolling. Um, other thing is just treating it like it's a cleaning cloth. Mm -hmm. Rubbing it again, pressing not as hard at the beginning, but then when I'm really into it, I can press really hard. And it, it's similar to um, clay in that I'm burnishing it mm -hmm. essentially when I do that. Um, so there are some pieces out here. The thing that you can do with with this, um, and again, I would I'm sort of shortening the process here, but you can really. Can have yeah. fun. Especially if you have some, like a great big shawl yeah. and you're doing this into your bathtub at home and you're wow. <laughs> you can imagine. And then you, know, you spray it with your water and then you get the soap and you get the bubble wrap out and you work on it. And it could, it's it's a great way to release some tension for sure. Yeah. Everybody's and got a little of that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> there's there's certainly an element of fun to this. Um, I love the colors you chose to blend. Oh, too. thank you. Yeah, this is completely random. I think I started with the yellow going this way and yeah. just babbling, blah, blah, blah. and then it went pink, and then a bit of blue, and then so you can see, you can see where it's sometimes if, if it's a scarf, for example, you might want to be a little more intentional with what you begin with. Um, there are techniques where you can flip it over and add stuff afterwards. Yeah. 
but um, generally, like myself, I have a little pattern that I work out when I make a scarf, for example, to two-sided thing. Um, for making something like a puppet, again, I, in this case, it started with the color I had a lot of. Okay. And I knew it was the inside, and it was kind of not important. Okay. So I just wanted it to be a solid color, and then I worked it up, and then painted with the red and the green and the layers of other fabrics afterwards, and then sewed, and then, you know, stuff. <laughs> so how do you get the shape? Of, you put it around a mold? Um, well, that's the interesting thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can see here, this was a nice rectangular piece of bubble wrap at one point, but I cut pieces out. Oh, I see. So I actually use what you, you kind of like encase, you envelope a piece of plastic or other non, um, like non-feltable material. Mm -hmm. Well, not material, but you know, uh, subject matter. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, you encase it with the fibers in the same way with the fibers at roughly right angles okay. to one another. And so that's like, for example, with the, with the puppet or with, you know, it's this kind of like a glorified mitten or mm -hmm. oven as well, um, or any kind of shape like that made to fit over a body part or something. You basically cut a shape that is kind of like that body part okay. or the shape that you want it to be like. And then you encase it oh, with the felt. See. Okay. So, like, so that's inside two layers. Yeah, of so felt. that's inside. Oh, and this cool. is around. Yeah. This is wrapped around. And mm -hmm. you can start it flat, and the fibers are meshed. Oh, wow. Then I would, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's you no. Know, and even with the not not a full amount of felting, I didn't do enough. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, yeah, and that's the thing, it's also very malleable at a certain point too, so you can play with it and you yeah. can form it, and if I decide, it's like I want to have oh, you can mold something, it. Yeah. you can mold it, and then pour boiling water on it, oh, cool. and it's like you, you set it yeah. at a point. Yeah. So, cool. so, yeah, I mean, if I say, this is my sculpture, this is what I want, I would, you know, make sure I'm happy, get, get it really hot, and I could stuff it, so mm -hmm. it's really, like, you can make a round globe shape if you want, mm -hmm. if it's stuffed especially when yeah. it's really smooth. Mm -hmm. um, you can do things like, if I, you know, decided I had wanted him to have a, a pinched nostril, so okay. I could look, I could pin, yeah, you know, yeah. pin it, pin it, cool. essentially, or use a clothespin or something, mm -hmm. and then it'll set like that, so, mm -hmm. yeah. But, like, again, it's like a sweater, you should write your sweaters if you have, if you hang it on a hanger because you're lazy, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> oh, it's got a weird thing up That's here. That's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. we've all done that. So I mean that's a very that's a basic. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, now I've got this bump on it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> push it. But yeah, so that's a very basic sort of introduction to how this happens. Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot more of this kind of stuff happens, a lot more of the what I think of as the most fun part besides the coloring. <laughs> cool. Can you put it on like yeah. the form? You can. Um, well, I think what happens is that you can put it on a form, like some people have um, done this on a, a ball shape or on something rounder. Um, at a certain point, it starts to shrink. And you can either deflate with the ball or ballooners, you can deflate it, or pop it, um, mm -hmm. and then take it off of that and then continue with the bowling and the, you know. I've made hats before, but I've used just a piece of flat. Yeah, and so it requires the slamming. You kind of have to focus on the part you want to change. Mm -hmm. So the, you, you, you learn to t trust your touch mm -hmm. and sort of how it feels. And you, you just you learn to throw it the right way. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. Nice. Yeah. And I'm, again, I've only done this for a couple of years now, but um, I like it. You know, it's a, a craft. Have you ever combined it with your painting? Not no, yet, cool. except for, yeah. you know, some people say, oh, the colors are the same, yeah. or, you know, or the layering, there's, I can see the similarities, mm -hmm. and there's certain things that I find appealing about yeah. both, but the actual cutting this and gluing or whatever, yeah. it's, it's just not happened yet. No. I thought, I, honestly, I was kind of hoping it would for this show, I was okay, planning on making yes. stuff, but yeah. then I didn't. It's always got to be kind of, especially painting for me, has yeah. to be genuine. So oh, yeah, it didn't yeah, feel right. like, it felt like it was a pushed thing. Sure. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I was hesitant. Yeah. <laughs>